Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the bit shoot channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. I tell you, I had to um, think very long and very hard about doing this episode because it is possible that I could lose friends over it. And I'm going to, again, as I sometimes have to do, preface this by saying I am a libertarian. I am not a Trump supporter. Unfortunately, I am sometimes put in the position of having to defend certain types of his actions because there are people who are positively insane about him. That said, please, for God's sake, stop making me defend Trump, you ridiculous loons. Get a grip. Look at objective reality for once. Stop being so damned knee-jerk, pre prejudicial, and hateful because I hate being put in this position. There is a really disturbing trend among those who are not Trump supporters to tar Trump and his supporters as racists, bigots, homophobes, white supremacists, Nazis, and anything else they can think of. Nazi, in particular, has become a very nasty trending word, and when you couple it with this notion that it's okay to punch a Nazi, you're talking about it's okay to punch any Trump supporter. And nothing could be further from the truth. And in addition... By continuing to sling horrible insults, you are guaranteeing a Trump victory in 2020. Not that he really has to try very hard at this point. Trump is not a Nazi. This is utterly self-evident. His son-in-law is Jewish. His daughter converted to Judaism. You can't be a Nazi and tolerate Judaism in your family. So your argument is insanity. It's completely demolished by anyone with the slightest ounce of common sense. Now, as to Trump being a racist, he said some stuff on Twitter, and understand that I am not defending what he tweeted in any way. I uh, certainly would never have said it myself, and I have a visceral reaction to it, just like everybody else does, but you have to pull back. You have to put your emotion on hold for a moment and look at it and see if it wasn't a tactic. Because despite his recent comments, I don't think that he is a racist nor a white supremacist. Most of what you've seen and heard about him are snippets and sound bites taken out of context because nothing you see in the press is real. Nothing. And I'm going to talk about that more in a moment. Sometimes Trump will intentionally goad the left, and that's what he was doing as a tactic. When he defended Nancy Pelosi against charges of racism by some of the loons in her own party, when she suggested that said loons should, he suggested rather, they, that said the loons should go back where they came from. Now note that he didn't say who he was talking about, and that was because he was yanking their chains, and it worked. The Democratic Party was in the position of needing to eject the furthest left in their ranks, and were doing so for about a week. But his comments caused them to close ranks. And in the long term, and perhaps even the short term, this is going to make the entire party look like communists and socialists. He succeeded in unifying the Democratic Party under the banner of communism and socialism, where they had previously been inching toward ejecting the worst of their members. Now again, I am not defending what he said. I have a visceral reaction to it. I think it's terrible. I would never have said it. But if I bow back, I put my emotions on hold for a moment, and I look at it as a tactic, well, he won. You always have to keep his statements in com context. The man is not stupid. He knows how to work that crowd, both in person and on Twitter. He knew what he was doing, and he won. Now, people who say he's racist, very typically what I hear is that he hates brown people. Well, that's nonsense. If you say that Trump hates brown people, then you have to also say that Obama hates brown people because Obama was bombing the same places that Trump has bombed, and he had been putting the same people in detention centers on the border under exact same or even worse conditions. The only difference now is that the propagandist press has trained cameras on it, 
and the complete loon, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, has made a stink, and it's impossible to determine if it's factual because she's such a loon. There is certainly no evidence that Trump is homophobic. The man lived and worked in Hollywood for years. Until he became president, none of the gay people in Hollywood ever had an unkind word to say about him. I don't think he cares one way or the other. And then there are all the Trump voters and supporters whom people have been calling the exact same stupid and baseless things as Trump. Trump supporters and voters are not Nazis. Trump has not been dog whistling to Nazis nor to white supremacists. Here's the truth about Nazis. They're a bunch of pathetic losers whose influence, demonstrations, and numbers have been steadily decreasing for my entire life. You see, I grew up and now live in the city that once headquartered the American Nazi Party. Now, I use this term headquarters very loosely, as it was the home of one Gary Lauk, who, from the basement of his ramshackle, dilapidated POS house that sometimes I passed on my way to high school, he produced his racist screeds to an ever-diminishing audience. And Lauk is still doing his thing, and his audience grows smaller with every day. Within a generation, they're all going to be gone. By the way, Lauk used to get occasional speaking gigs at the University of Nebraska while I was attending. You know how we dealt with it? We didn't burn things down. We didn't beat anybody up. We ignored him. He wound up playing to near-empty lecture halls attended by three kinds of people. Journalism majors who were writing back-page stories on him for the campus newspaper. Poli-sci majors who wanted to see a real, live, self-professed Nazi and psych majors who wanted to see a real live paranoid. When you pay attention to someone, even by protesting them, you give them power. When you turn your back and you laugh at them, they have none. Now, the only reason that, that you think that Trump and his supporters are all Nazis is because the press has begun pointing cameras at Nazi rallies where they'd previously ignored them for decades. There are, in fact, Fewer Nazis today than when Obama was in office, because the numbers are always decreasing. Now remember the secondary motto of this show, which always scrolls past in my lower third. Just did. <laughs> Nothing that you see in the press is real. Nothing. And I mean this in an entirely literal sense, as I have made a 30-year hobby of debunking the press. Now, I most recently walked through my methods in a video called Viewer Challenge, Debunk the Press, and prior to that, in a longer live stream called Nothing You See in the Press is Real. Nothing. And there are links to both of these in my description box below. It's probably time to do it again, and some week when I have nothing else to do, I will. But you may take this as absolute gospel. Nothing you see in the press is real. Nothing doesn't matter if it's CNN, MSNBC, NBC, ABC, CBS, PBS, Fox News, your local TV station, your local radio station, or your local newspaper. Even if they are trying to get the facts right, which is rarely because they're all unapologetic propagandists, but even when they're trying, I guarantee that they screwed up the facts somewhere. Even if it's just a story about your local fire department getting a cat out of a tree next door, the press will screw up the facts. Nothing you see in the press is real. Nothing. And when they tell you that there are Nazis, racists, homophobes, and white supremacists lurking around every tree and bush, the press is simply propagandizing you. Don't fall for the propaganda just because you happen to have a political disagreement with Trump. Don't be a useful idiot. Because if you believe the press about anything, that's what you are, a useful idiot. And useful idiots are going to get Trump reelected in 2020, whether you realize it or not. Short of some massive problem with the economy, Trump already has the 2020 election in the bag.
And that's because the Democrats bet the farm on Russian collusion, and that rather predictably fell apart. Because it was based on a story from BuzzFeed, the weekly world news of the internet. They might as well be running stories on Batboy. But by betting the farm on Russian collusion and having it turn out to be nothing but a giant conspiracy theory, it left the Democrats looking hateful, spiteful, desperate, and idiots, bent on unseating a fairly elected president by any means necessary. And they continue to do it. And now Joe Average thinks that the Democrats are hateful, spiteful, desperate idiots and are not inclined to vote for them. Secondly, God, the field of Democratic nominees, oh, it's filled with nothing but socialists and communists. And while this might play well to the fantastic minority of socialists and communists in the United States who are trapped in their own ideological bubble, it is death for a presidential candidate. Half the country is not racist, white supremacist, homophobic, nor Nazis. Continuing to call people such things only angers them because they know it for the prejudice and unreasoning hatred that it is. If you cannot get votes by insulting people, Hillary tried it, look how that turned out. The only people at this point who are going to vote for a Democrat will be the leftist coasts, and even then only the cities themselves and not the suburbs. Because when you compare the county level election maps for 2012 and 2016. The reason that Hillary lost is really clear. She lost the suburbs. They had previously voted for Obama. So between the Clintons having spent my entire adult life skating from one scandal to the other and the obvious miscarriage of justice that Hillary enjoyed due to her political power, thus proving, by the way, that there will never be justice for anyone rich or powerful and then, by calling half the country names, Hillary was unelectable. And in 2020, Trump is going to carry even more votes than he did in 2016. Continuing to be prejudicial and hate-mongering, that is, being a useful idiot, will only ensure this. While the Democrats have no chance this time around, they and the useful idiots are doing themselves no favor by doubling down on the prejudice and hatred. If they want to ever have even the slightest chance, they need to cut it out. They should instead focus on a platform that will attract voters. The current platform consists of only two planks, Orange Man Bad and Free Stuff. And that's not going to get you elected. The Democrats are in the process of suicide. And I am not thrilled about this because a single party having complete dominance never works out well. Historically, it is always a very bad thing. Now, if the Democrats want to ever win, get out of your ideological bubble. Stop assuming that anyone with whom you disagree is a Nazi and come up with a platform capable of wooing voters. And that's all I have to say about that. So thanks for watching. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. If you like the videos, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, or a place on my website where you can support me further, and there are links to all of these in my description box below. So that's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.